Okay, in the previous video, I did a one-dimensional elastic collision with a special case where one of the masses was at rest, and it was tough. Now, imagine what would happen if you have two objects, mo both moving, in two dimensions with an elastic collision. Okay, it, it is solvable, but I'm not going to solve it. Okay, but let's set it up. So the first thing I would say is momentum is conserved because there's no net external force. So this says that um, P total 1 equals P total 2. So I could say uh, this as MA VA1, which is a vector, plus MB VB1 equals MA VA2 plus MB VB2. I'm going to leave it right there. Okay, that's an equation. How many things do I not know? Well, let's say that I know the initial velocity. So I know the masses and initial velocities. I know the final masses, they don't change. And I don't know this velocity and I don't know that one. So that's two. No, wait, it's four. No, wait, it's six, right? It depends if you have a three-dimensional vector. There are three components here. And there's three components there. So there, there could be six things that you don't know um, if you had it in three dimensions. And it may be better to deal with this as a vector. But that's one equation. Well, it's really kind of three equations, right? Because you have an X and a Y and a Z equation. So that's not so bad. Now, if it's an elastic collision, then kinetic energy should be conserved too. KE total... 1 ke total 2. So I can write this as 1 half ma va1 magnitude squared plus 1 half mb vb1 magnitude squared equals 1 half ma va2 magnitude squared plus, I ran out of room, ah! one half mb vb2 magnitude squared. So that gives me another equation. Um, things get really crazy because you start having these vectors, you got to square things. It's bad, people, okay? It's really, really, really messy. And I don't want to do it. But I do want to look at two-dimensional collisions. So instead, let's build a numerical model for a two-dimensional collision. I guess we should start with a numerical model for one-dimensional collisions. And that's what I'll build. And then I'll have another video where I do a, a one-dimensional, a two-dimensional. Okay, so here's my model. I'm going to use a ball. Here's A and B. And A is moving with some velocity and it's going to collide with B, which could also be moving. I don't really care. Now, how do I conserve momentum? Well, there has to be a force between them so when they're interacting. So when they collide, one, they got bigger, right? You see they got bigger because I can't draw circles. Then let's say this is A and B. There'll be a force of A pushing on B, but also a force of B pushing on A. As long as there is a force, the same force between them, the momentum will be conserved, period. That's all, okay? So there's a lot of ways you could do this. Um, you could do, uh, I could make a program that finds the position of these objects. And when the objects overlap, there's a force pushing them apart. So I could use a constant overlap force. So I'd have to pick that, say F, the magnitude of that equals, let's say, 10. And then I'd have to find these as vectors if they overlap. So I'd have a loop in there. If overlap, then F equals 10. And then, and then use my momentum principle to update the momentum of the two objects. So update the momentum, update the position, which I will link down below my first uh, video on numerical calculations. But we have to have this variable force in there. Okay, that would be nice.
to, uh, otherwise you always have that force and it's, it still work. Uh, it just wouldn't look like a collision. Here's a, one I want to do. Spring force. So if they overlap, I'm going to have a force pushing them apart that is proportional to the amount overlap. So let's say these have a radius of R. So this would be 2R. So then F would be equal to, the magnitude would be equal to some spring constant times um, the actual distance, which is going to be, let's say that as 2 lowercase r, 2 r minus r. The difference between the actual distance and the overlap, the, the maximum distance, would be the force. And then if they're not overlapping, then f equals 0. Okay, so that's what I'm going to make. I'm going to make this model. Now, some things I have to check. Is momentum conserved? Is kinetic energy conserved? Conserved. Okay, so let's make this model. That means I'm going to switch to Python, and I'll see you there. I had to get a little bit of a jump start here, so I went ahead and made a program. Let, let me run it, and I'll explain what's going on. I didn't add the collisions. There's just two balls moving, really. Notice they pass right through each other. There's no interaction. Okay, so what do I have here? I have ball A with some radius. I have ball B with some radius. They actually happen to have the same radius. I set the masses at 100 grams. I gave them both an initial velocity and an initial momentum. I have the time interval and the time. And then they both have a force of zero on them. Okay. Uh, and then I do what I normally do, right? I make a loop and I, I update the momentum. And then I update the position and I update time. That's all I do. Okay. So now what we want to do is to first... Uh, pick a spring constant for our interball spring force. So let's say k equals, um, I'm picking a value here that I think might work. Let's just go with uh, 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 100, 101. I just picked that value. I don't even know if it's going to work. I can change it later. So the first thing I'm going to do in my loop here is do a conditional statement. So uh, actually I'm going to first calculate r. I can say r is the vector from ball A to ball B. So it's going to be ball B dot POS minus ball A dot POS. I need to calculate what, how far apart they are. Now, if the magnitude of A, of that distance, is less than, if it's less than r A plus r B, then I'm going to calculate the force. Actually, so let me do this up here too. F, let me put this up here. I'm going to set the force equal to zero again because what's going to happen is if they stop colliding, I need to reset it back to zero every time I need to check this. Okay, so if they are overlapping, then FBA, this is going to be the force on A, which is the left one, is going to be equal to uh, K times uh, the separation, the, the amount that is compressed. So that would be equal to, um, let's see, I'm going to get this backwards, so I'm just going to do it. Mag R minus RA plus RB. Now, but that's not a vector. Okay. So, I'm going to need to multiply that by norm R, the unit vector R. And let's see, so let's see, r is going to the right, uh, r is going to be less than that, so it's going to be a negative number, so it's going to be put, okay, I think that's right, I think that's right. And then fab is just going to be negative fba, that's it. That's all I need to do. I think that's all I need to do. I think that's all. Okay, let's, let's save it and run it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, right? I make mistakes all the time. It's not a big deal. Should 
check that out. Did it work? It worked. Was it awesome? It's awesome. Did it work? Oh, I don't know. Here's the first thing we can do. Okay, let's print out the total momentum and the total kinetic energy beforehand. So let's say, um, uh, let's say K, there's another way to calculate kinetic energy, which is momentum squared over 2M. Okay, so let's say K1 is going to be equal to uh, the kinetic energy of ball 1. So it's going to be uh, the magnitude of ball A dot P squared divided by 2 times ball A dot M plus magnitude of ball B dot P squared divided by 2 times ball B dot M. And let's print that. So let's say print initial momentum equals and this is going to be uh, ball A dot P plus ball B dot P and the units are kilogram meters per second. Now print initial K and this is going to be K1 in joules. And let's do that again down here at the end. Okay, so K2 is going to, oh, that's all I have to do. And just changes to final. And final. And K2. I think that'll work. Initial momentum zero, final momentum zero. Dude, that worked. First try, boom. Okay, but wait, what would happen if the masses aren't the same? So let's make that twice as much. Momentum is still conserved. I'm pretty happy. What if we did this? Remember we said, what if the masses are the same, but the velo one of them had a zero velocity? That looks like it works. It kind of it seems like this one's moving, but that's because the uh, the camera zooms out. I'm pretty excited. Now, I said I was going to do a 1D collision, and you know what? I lied. I did a 2D collision. I'm a liar. Okay. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to keep that one ball B at zero, and all I'm going to do is change this to point. Zero, two. So I'm moving this ball up a little bit. Let's see what happens. I, let me do this too. Make trail. I, I honestly, I'm not 100% sure this is going to work. I'm 89.4% sure it's going to work. Oh, I, I, I need to let it run a little bit longer. And I could do this uh, through a different time, but let's do four. Let's just see what happens. What? It worked. Okay, was momentum conserved? Yes, it was. Was the kinetic energy, wait, initial momentum should, oh no, it's, it, the, the initial momentum in the x in the y direction zero and the final momentum in the y direction zero because this ball's moving up and that ball's moving down. Okay, let's just do something fun here. What if I change, this, everything works, everything works. What if I change the radius of ball B? Still works, check that out, okay. I don't know what to tell you guys, but this program is awesome. Um, let's have a glancing blow. So let's put this. Let's put this back at 0.5. I, I, you can play with this all day, and you should. Let's say like that. 
Look at that. Okay, here's something that you I keep looking at, and it's something that you can solve for, and I'm not going to prove it. Uh, I'm pretty sure in elastic collisions, if the masses are the same, and maybe even if they're not, the angle between these two is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, but I'm going to stop there. I'm going to share this code with you. You need to play with it. This is 1D elastic collision because it's really 2D elastic collisions because I cheated. I did it the best way. And I didn't make a mistake on the coefficient, the, the frictional force, I mean the... Um, the forces over here. Oh, but you could do something like that. You could add in friction. Okay. Now, I will tell you, how would you make a non-elastic collision in a numerical calculation? It is not trivial. Okay. An elastic collision is pretty easy. An inelastic collision is pretty easy. What about somewhere in between? That's not so easy. Um, I might make it. I might not. I haven't decided yet. I'll talk to you guys later.